So the first thing I'd like to do is welcome you to the FST family. Okay? We are a community. We work together as, as a team and collaborate as a team in this faculty. We are all going to be, if I look at it this way, our objective is to bring the genius out of you. Okay? And, but, on, on, but really and truly, welcome and welcome and welcome. We want you to feel at home. We want you to feel comfortable. Some of you are not, some of you are from other countries. And you, when you come to our faculty, not only are you coming to the best faculty in the UWI, the region, and hopefully the world, but you are also coming into a very unique family where we treat our students with respect and treat them as one of our own. We're not going to abandon you and throw you to the side, you know. In other words, we're not going to say to you, oh, you failed the course, get lost. We, we don't operate that. We will help you get through, okay? So, you, so welcome, welcome again, and I'm glad to see everyone is here. And again, I apologize for the delay outside. It, uh, it was a little bit unfortunate. But it would be well worth the wait. So to just start off with a nice corny joke from, from, from a book called The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Anybody ever heard of that book? Woo, okay, so I'm not that old. Uh, funny as that question is, and um, I think this was also in the movie as well. Funny as the question is, if you really think about it, science is not really just about the answer. Science is about the question you ask. Because if you ask the wrong question, even though you will get the right answer for the question, you may not solve the problem. So it's all about logical thinking, innovative thinking, creativity. That's all the things you're going to leave here with. And not only when you leave with it, but other disciplines, we want you even though you're in the science, to participate. So when I say that, we've had banks in Britain hire chemists for, because chemists have logical thinking and very good testing skills. And they wanted these, those students, et cetera, to use those analytical skills. So you're going to come out here when we are finished with you with those excellent skills developed at a high quality, OK? Right. Here, so I'm going to just show you some of the um, persons that are, are the head of, well, you're going to meet at some point, let's put it this way. So obviously the person there is at the top. So I'm the Dean of the Faculty of Science and Technology, Colin Deprodean. Okay. Deprodean, not Deprodine, Depr Deprecate, or any such strange words, okay. Uh, Dr. Adrian Isles is in the middle here, and he's sitting over here. He's the Deputy Dean for Undergraduate Studies. Uh, Dr. Garner O'Neill, who's over there, is the Deputy Dean, Graduate Studies and Outreach, but she still helps with the undergraduate students and vice versa. We work as a team. As you can see, we take pictures like a model, uh, first class. Uh, Ms. K. Brown is the Administrative Assistant in the faculty office. She's at the top of the hill waiting for you. Uh, and her two persons who work with her, Shanna and Gloria, are there as well. Do not tell them I have these pictures. Okay. <clears throat> And the two heads of the department, Dr. Janet Soda as the Department of Computer Science, Mathematics and Physics, which also includes Meteorology and Electronics, he's over here. And Dr. Avril Williams for the Biological and Chemical Sciences is over here. See, they look exactly like their picture. We are not lying. So they're right here. And you will get to see them more and more. You'll probably see them more than you'll see me, because they'll be dealing with your programs, etc. And you're going to meet all the lecturers at the top of the hill. The meteorology course is taught by uh, an affiliate, the Caribbean Institute of Meteorology and Hydrology. You'll meet them up at the top. Uh, Mrs. Caesar, Kathy Ann Caesar is in charge. Um, the day of day will be up there waiting for you. And you, you may have to spend some, if you're doing meteorology, you may have to spend some time at their, the institute, which is next to Queen's College down the road there. Okay. Um, transportation, et cetera, is arranged, so do not worry about that. The difference between the faculty of, so the faculty has departments. The dean and the deputy deans belong to the faculty office, and the heads manage the, the departments, OK? So in fact, you are going to spend most of your time within the departments. So the role of the faculty office really is to deal with or, overarching mati um, um, issues that affect all students. So things like um, you may want to change your major, that, is a right to all students, so you come to the faculty office. But if you, for some reason you have a, uh, an issue with the lab, that's a departmental matter because that is attached to the program itself, okay? See what I mean? So 
I just give you an overview of where you go. So for many of those forms, you come to us. If you want to transfer to another faculty, which I'm sure you won't, if you want to um, deal with overrides, which we'll explain to you shortly, uh, et cetera, you come to us. But with the matters of the course, courses themselves, the program details, lab quotes, um, the books needed for labs, et cetera, that's a departmental matter. Over time, you will um, figure it out, okay? It's not difficult. So the dean deals with general overall matters and departments deal with the specifics of the disciplines. Okay. So our aim is very simple, number one. Okay. And as I tell people every year, people look at me and, and smile, but as I ask everyone, we all remember who won the 100 meters gold for the last umpteen years, right? Who came last in the finals? Exactly. <clears throat> or I shouldn't say last, if. Okay, eighth, we won't say last. Who okay, came eighth? Okay, or seventh, sixth. You see what I mean? Nobody remembers. So really and truly, anything you do in life, you should strive to be number one. It's better to aim high and just miss it and end up just below than to aim low because if you aim low, you will always end up lower. Okay, but if you aim high, you will end up higher. So it, it's actually, it actually works. I'm not just speaking um, Greek. Good, so our philosophy really is science for all. And I put that what is a scientist slash technologist for those doing the computer science, et cetera. Essentially what we are trying to say to you he here is that the images of a scientist that you see in Big Bang Theory and all these different shows, that's fine for them and that's fun, but that's not a true image of a scientist. A scientist is someone who is inquisitive, who wants to know about the world, who wants to explore, et cetera. And what I'm saying that is that in our faculty, we don't, we don't concern ourselves with gender, we don't concern ourselves with race. We don't concern ourselves with whether you have a disability. None of that is of concern with us. All we are concerned about is the science and the technology and the fact that you are here. And that, that, that philosophy emanates through everything that we do. So I'm just making an assurance to all here that we are serious about our business when we say science for all, okay? So I put this up here to say that, you know, we do have students in the faculty with learning and physical disabilities. Um, and we have staff members on campus in similar categories. And we, I'm simply re-emphasizing re here that you're welcome here. Do not have any concerns whatsoever. We will, we will do what is necessary to meet whatever accommodation needs are necessary, okay? If you have a temporary disability as well, you fell and broke a leg or something like that, the same thing applies. Uh, I should point out that we have on campus an association called the UWI Cave Hill Association for Persons with Disabilities. It is a student association of the Guild. It was started by, um, two years ago by a student in our faculty, uh, Ms. Miranda Blackman, who was a student with a physical disability. She graduated at the end of September, sorry, the end of semester two with um, chemistry slash with biology minor. And so she started this association. The current president, he himself, is also from our faculty, Vishal. He is probably at the top of the hill there. And I would encourage you to join, but you don't have to have a disability to, to join. Anyone could join this association. The association's um, purpose is to ensure that students with disabilities on campus, their rights are maintained and their accommodation needs are met, as well as other things like educating the public and so on. Nevertheless, uh, on, on the 31st of August, which is this Friday, I am willing to have a meeting with all students with disabilities, new and current, in the biology demonstration room. Uh, don't worry about the location yet. However, if you want to have a personal one-to-one -one meeting with me, you and your parents or guardians, then be, feel free to, to do so. So I leave the option open. You can come to that meeting. So it could be very well the case that on Friday, I'm sitting in the room by myself and everyone else wants to meet personally, okay? But um, it is to discuss how we deal with accommodation issues and et cetera, and how the campuses, how the campus manage, manages it as well. On the biology demonstration, if you want to attend the meeting, you can come to me and we will inf I would give you an idea. But during the faculty tours, uh, those who, who do go, you can, it will be pointed out to you where the room is. But please indicate to me if you want to, if you want to attend the meeting or not. And then I will deal with, we will deal with the issues afterwards, okay? So I quote the famous person, Stephen Hawkins, who unfortunately has died recently. But nevertheless, he points out, um, very good points there. The, the, the middle, the second one is the most important thing. Um, you must never give up, and that applies to all. Coming to university is, is not easy. I am not gonna deny it. 
you, you're transitioning from secondary school, et cetera, to this. And it's not an easy transition for anyone. And then when you leave here, you're transitioning to work. Employment is not easy either. But if you never give up and you believe in yourself, then you will succeed, okay? And of course, in life, you will hear more no than yes. But the only thing that matters is what you believe of yourself. So if Stephen Hawkins did not adopt that attitude, he would not have succeeded. Okay, um, diversity. As I said before, we are not interested in how you look or where you came from. All we're interested in is that you're here and you're doing the work that you need to do. Okay, um, science is a neutral entity. Anything that's not neutral in science is because of human nature, but the science itself is neutral, okay? So just, just remember that. So again, I welcome everybody here uh, once again. And some quotes from, you know who this person is? I see silence. You cannot tell me you not know. What discipline is, is, is this? Uh, she? Chemistry? Who said chemistry? Hmm? I hear silence. Okay. But you're correct. And she would not have had an easy time. She, she spoke about her father always reminding her that while it's a male-dominated world, your genius, etc., must come out. Um, I didn't put that quote in there, but as you can see, she, she points out some interesting things about the science. And when she says, I was taught, she was referring to her father, okay? And of course, nothing in life is to be feared, which is important. <clears throat> so why are you here? For a whole variety of reasons. Of course, you're here to get a degree, I hope. Okay, not to party, to get a degree first, primarily. You're here to learn, there are different cultures from different countries, especially as we now have the Confucius Center there. We have persons from China as well here. Um, but of course, we want you to leave here being an innovative thinker, thinker and, create, and creative as well. But um, independent thinker is also important as a scientist. You need to be able to think for yourself. So when you're watching the news and somebody is saying something, listen to what they're saying carefully, and many times you realize it's just a whole lot of nothing. Right? So you need to be able to think very carefully about what is the, on a more serious note, what is the fluff and what is the reality. Because as a scientist, you're bringing facts. Okay? And those in technology, you're bringing the facts. So that is important to know. If I seem like going fast, I need to catch up from, because of the delay. This, we, we are now, all right, so this thing here about embrace your inner nerd is a play on the word nerd. And as you can see from our acronym, it speaks to a lot of things we wish you to be. We want you to be novel, extendable, resourceful, and determined, never give up. And we created a logo for that. Uh, we, we actually utilized the logo, I'll get to that in a minute. But the point is, these are the attributes that we wish you to, um, to utilize and develop, as well as others that you, the, the ones you would develop in the discipline itself. Um, and we're playing on the word nerd because we know nerd is treated in a very bad way. And what better way to, is to take a negative word and turn it around? There's some negative words in this world I would never say, and there's no amount of turning around you could do with those words, but this is a word which you could turn around. And other universities do similar things. And really, and truly, what we're saying to you is do not be afraid to be in science. Do not worry about what others say. Do not concern yourself with that. Be free and happy. If you like to dress up like Superman or Superwoman or whatever, and you want to go to um, the show there at Sheraton that just passed and look at anime and whatnot, don't be embarrassed, okay? So when I went to watch Avengers uh, Infinity War, I had to sit down and go online and make sure I check up on every superhero that I was going to be in, make sure I knew the background material, what Infinity Stones were. I was not going into my film unprepared. And my wife knew she had to sit down and not say a word to me. And my friends knew, don't disturb Dr. Deputy when he's watching his, his Avengers movie, OK? Then I had to sit down and explain it to them afterwards. <laughs> right. We do have a nerd day, which took place in February. I took some pictures here. That day is all about innovation and creativity. The posters there, that, that picture of the posters are posters created by postgraduate students to demonstrate how their research um, solves problems as opposed to telling you about the biological name for a virus, the poster told you how dealing with the virus solved the problem, Some, things like that. And the one, the, the picture over there is of students, and we had a back in time display, which I, which I will most likely do again, where we showed a lot of equipment that ceased to exist before you were born, okay? Um, things like the rec record player with the old vinyl records, you're not gonna see those around. 
but we still have one. I'm not sure if it still works, but it, it does exist. And some old games. And just to show the, my inner nerd coming out again, this is the best Batman movie ever created. I will tell you that now. That nonsense that uh, they did recently, no, 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 no. Okay? And the best Joker is here. In fact, in the last, not the last one, the one, yeah, the last, the last um, trilogy, the fellow who acted as a Joker copied um, Jack Nicholson. And of course, music by Prince, you couldn't have it better. <laughs> okay? But the Joker has a good point. There's nothing better than the healing power of laughter, but obviously in the movie, he wasn't being very nice. <clears throat> All right. We have faculty clubs. We have the Computer Science Society, the Chemistry Society, Meteorology, and Environmental Club. So you're free to join them as you see fit. They'll be up there on the middle floor, as I said before, because the building has three floors, and you can talk to them. And I would encourage you to join at least one. I would encourage you to join some of the clubs on, on campus. There are other clubs which you would have probably seen at the earlier orientation with the student, Office of Student Services. But when I say join, I don't mean join at, at the expense of your studies, okay? So one or two, and if you can manage one or two, fine. But if you try to join all, then you're going to run into a problem. But we do. These, these clubs here exist within the faculty. They don't exist within the guild. So you'll have to, to work through the faculty and the students at the top to join. We also have a women in technology network, primarily, um, well, it speaks for itself, is to, to encourage the female students to stay in technology once they graduate and to join it before. The irony of our faculty is in the biological and chemical sciences, sciences the department is 70 percent female, and in the other department it is 70 percent male. Very strange. So this, in this case, we're trying to get more females into the computer science, math, and physics, et cetera, area, and at some point we'll try to get more males in the, in the other area, okay? But this is really meant to, this particular network, which is run by Dr. Garner O'Neill and some um, professional um, ladies in the profession, private sector, to create initiatives and programs to encourage um, young ladies to stay, or ladies in general, to stay in, okay? We really want, because what we find is that they do well in computer science, for example, and then go out in the real world, meet the stigma, and give up. But you can't let some, um, some male, you go, if you go, let's say if you go to a job interview and some man is there interviewing and he says something that's discriminate, on gender discrimination, do not let that male or even a female for that matter stop you from your dreams. It is his or her problem, okay? And that's the objective here, ready to, for you to see that there are lots of women in technology in Barbados and many of them are actually chief information officers and whatnot. They do exist, all right? And now here is the thing that I'm going to emphasize. Hardware and dedication is what is necessary. There are no shortcuts to success. In other words, if, you're, if you are trying to, if you notice when you try to avoid traffic and you take a shortcut, you meet more traffic because everybody else decided to do the same thing. The shortcuts generally don't work, okay? And in science, if you try to take a shortcut in the experiment, you might end up with some mutation monster coming out to attack you or something like that. You see what I'm saying? You know, you, there are no shortcuts in these things. It's hard work and de de dedication. Alcohol is never a good thing unless used for cleaning uh, wounds or a little rum in the, in the fruit cake or something like that. But binging on alcohol ends in one way, one way and one way only, badly. So we're just, I'm just warning you, you know, that is not a good idea to go. You can go to a FET. You're, a big adult, you're now considered young adults. There's no need to consume three and four and five glasses of beer and any such thing, okay? I don't drink alcohol, period, but that's my choice. But I'm just saying, and Einstein says here, which is very true, that's what insanity is defined as, doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. So if you come in and you're in your first year and you decide to party, you decide not to do too much studying and you don't pass your courses in semester one, if you go and repeat it in semester two, you're not gonna get a different result, okay? So understand what I'm saying, you're gonna adjust and as you adjust, adjust sensibly. Don't try to keep doing the same thing over expecting a different result. Okay? And study first, fat later is a good thing to, to remember. Okay? Just to remind you, I wish you would know, we do know what plagiarism is, right? Yeah. Correct? You know, using somebody else's work as your own. 
We don't allow any sort of cheating or plagiarism or anything in between. <clears throat> and sometimes the two commingle. And Einstein gives a good thing there, as he says, the difference between genius and stupidity is that genius has its limits. Okay, and it's a good point to say, you know, cheating and, and plagiarizing is just stupidity. It ends badly every single time. And you don't want to be called out in front of a young yeah, trying to scare the life out of you. You don't want to end up in front of some disciplinary committee having your, your future being determined because you decided that you're going to write the answer upon your sleeve. And while you're looking under there and somebody asks you what you're doing and you tell them that you're checking to see if you wrote the order it, right? That sort of thing. Really, we're not going to fall for that, right? You really must not engage in cheating. And people do all sorts of things to cheat. And what is the unfortunate thing is that someone will say, well, I was in the exam. Someone cheated and they didn't get caught. So I should do it too. And guess who ends up being the one caught? Okay. I also, it reminds me of a true story where a, a, well, he's not so much a friend, a colleague was stopped for speeding. He was driving at 100 and something miles per hour, uh, kilometers per hour. And he was complaining. He, he complained to the police that, but what about the other fellow who was speeding? And they told him, but well, you were the slowest. <laughs> so you see, so at the end, you know, you see what I'm saying. So his, his um, lack of common sense did not help him. <clears throat> That's actually a true story. And just to say to you that we, when we communicate with you as true scientists, we like to be to the point. We're not going to be wordy, etc. Um, George Eliot is actually a woman, not a man. But back then, women weren't allowed to write as authors, so she masqueraded as a, as a man. But she had a very good piece of advice there, and I think we should all take it, you know, don't talk unnecessarily. But on a more serious note, we, we tend to utilize a lot of um, online social media, et cetera, to communicate. <clears throat> if you want to take a picture of that, you're free to take a picture of it. Um, these are the different things. The most important one is the top. That number is the faculty office number. You will, you will soon learn the departmental office one as you go along, because the departments have their own offices. And that's my email address <clears throat> and the faculty one. Okay? But remember that if you have an issue with the, within the department, deal with the department first before you come to me. And then, if, you know, and then we will see. I am supposed to be the last resort in terms of issues. <clears throat> But those are the pages we have. The website is currently being updated. So if you look at it, I assure you it's not going to look like that for much longer, OK? Just, just rest assured. It's taking a little bit longer than expected due to technical difficulties. All right, so I'm moving on. <clears throat> yes, nerd at FST. I see it as well. All right, so in terms of your email address, all your email addresses will start with your first name dot last name. <clears throat> and end at, at mycavehill.uwi.edu at this present moment. <clears throat> um, if students have the same first and last name, they tend to put on a number at the end of the last name to make a distinction. But whatever they give to you, all official correspondence will be to that email. Okay? We're not going to be sending anything to you at Gmail unless you're locked out of your mycavehill for some reason. <clears throat> Reason being, you know, and, and here's a, a, a word of advice. If you're going to create a Hotmail address and Gmail address to put on your CV, names like Iron Lung, Rabbit Rabbit, and all those certain names don't impress an employer, OK? That's my tip to you. They, they complain to me and show me who in their right mind would send, you know, use your name or something close to your name, OK? But keep those for your friends. Those are real email addresses, by the way. So now I have to do the boring stuff that Students don't like to hear, but you really should listen and, and take in carefully, OK? <clears throat> you, would have you would have received by now letters telling you that you're either lower matriculated or fully matriculated. <clears throat> and that's just a fancy word for telling you that either you're a four-year program or three-year program, OK? To get into the three-year program, you would have needed the equivalent of CAPE or an associate degree, which is equivalent. And if you had the two CAPE subjects or the associate degree with a, a GPA of 2.5 or above, then you would be in the three-year three, three year program. <clears throat> yeah, let's say it that way. You'll be in the three-year program. I'll quantify that in a minute. But if you didn't have that, you'd be in the four-year one. We have uh, what we call preliminary courses, preliminary mathematics, preliminary biology, and so on. And they were the equivalent of CAPE. 
So if you didn't have the necessary CAPE, you would have to go there. Now, you would say to me, but I have two CAPE subjects and I was still put in the four-year program. The reason being is that you may have decided, you may have CAPE, um, let's say physics and maths, but you decided to do biology and chemistry, which requires CAPE, biology and chemistry. So you still end up back in the four-year program because you didn't have the, the qualifying CAPEs. Okay? <clears throat> but that would have been in your letters received when you, your acceptance letters from the campus. Some of you would be familiar with what a major is and, and, and degrees, but when you graduate from us, you were graduating with a degree. A degree consists of at least one major and courses, okay? You might have two majors. I'll show you the structure in a minute. But essentially, when you do a set of predefined courses, you will get a number of credits, and those credits are added on to give you a major. So a major requires, for example, 60 credits at level two and three. I'll repeat it again. And half of them might come from the major of one major, your biology major, and you get the rest from somewhere else. But the point is, you need a major, and if you want to graduate from our faculty, clearly the major must come for us. So you might, if you come to do biology, you're doing a major in biology. <clears throat> so even though the degree will say um, BSc biology, you still need to do the major. So your objective in terms of getting a degree is to get enough credits to, which is equivalent to, to giving you the degree, and to get the credits, the major defines how to get the credits. And the structure of the program as a whole will define that. So what I'm going to show you now is what I mean by the structure, et cetera. So that's just an overall. So you're effectively, when you study, you're earning credits. All right, let's start this way. So for a three-year program, don't worry about the preliminary year yet. You have level one, which is first year, two, and three, second and third year. Those are the minimum number of credits you require. So you need at least 24 credits at level one, 60 at level two and three, which we call the advanced courses, and nine for the foundation courses. Every course in our faculty is three credits. Not talking about the preliminary cor prelim courses yet. Let's just deal with the other ones. Three credit courses, plus or minus one or two odd courses, but there are three credit courses. And you'll find across the University of West Indies, courses are three credits. So if you have 24 credits at the top and three, how many courses are those? And it's worth three credits. You can't tell me you can't divide 24 by three. <coughs> Seriously? <coughs> all right. While you figure it out, all right, all right. But you need eight courses. But in reality, though, at, from the major, you're more likely to get five courses out of the major, okay? which is 15 credits. And you pick up the rest depending on what you plan to do. Um, level two, the 60 credits. The major will give you half of those, and then you need to find the other half, which we'll discuss in a minute. And all students must do foundation courses. Every student at the University of the West Indies, across the region. Each foundation course is worth three credits, so you have to do three. You must do the English one, one or the other. So either do the foundation 1001 or 1008. <clears throat> I am not sure what they do in either, other than they teach English, but you must do one or the other. And you must do the other two listed below. There is an exception, which we'll come to later. But generally, for now, accept that you need to do the English Foundation course. There are no exceptions to the English Foundation course. You cannot get away from it. You must do it. This is separate from the fundamentals of English, which you would end up doing if you didn't pass the entrance exam for, for the English test. Okay? We're dealing strictly with the Foundation courses. <clears throat> so keep that in mind. If you have to do a preliminary year, the most you will end up doing is 24 credits, which is two courses per semester, because a prelim course is worth six credits. <clears throat> the prelim course is, is equivalent to one unit of CAPE. So prelim mathematics one and two is the same as CAPE pure mass one and two. And similarly for the S. And computer science one and two is similar to um, CAPE computer science one and, one and two as well. Okay? The syllabus is the same. There is no real difference. If you have passed the CAPE already, no, you cannot come and do our preliminary courses and get credit. Okay? We don't, once you pass, you pass. The only time you can repeat a course is if you fail it. You're not going to fail courses. Agreed? The lack of enthusiasm is, is shocking. I, the way people say it is like, maybe not. You know, I may pass. No, no, you're going to pass. Oh, and I should say, uh, the reason I say 6 to 24, 
is that you may have come in with our three of the key subjects are missing one unit, so you just do one prelim, or you may come in with maths, or, or let's do a better one, you may come in with the biology and not the chemistry, so you just do the prelim chemistry and not the prelim biology, so it varies, okay? If you never did any CAPE or associate degrees, then obviously you would do the 24 credits in total. That would be your first year, or that would be the, the reason you have four years. Once you finish the preliminary year, then you're considered fully matriculated and you go into the actual degree program itself. Um, for a single major now, it's the same thing, 24 credits at level one minimum, but at level two, you only get 30 credits from a single major, and the other 30 you must find from other courses. Understood? And to get into the other courses, you must have had the prerequisites. So you need to think about what you're planning to do moving forward. But let's be clear here. If you do a major and you get the 30 credits, to get the other 30 credits does not require you to sign up for another major or another minor, okay? You may just decide to fill up the rest with extra courses in biology and chemistry or et cetera, okay? But the major defines what you must do at a minimum. Are we clear on that? Because students write to me, say, I need to change my major to biology and chemistry because I need to make up the other 30 credits. And I have to say to them, don't do chemistry for the sake of just getting 30 credits. Do it because you want to be in chemistry. Okay? So some students would make up the other 15 credits, for example, doing uh, philosophy, gender study courses, etc. So you have some freedom there. <clears throat> but the 30 credits, you must, to get a degree in our faculty, you must have that single major minimum. Okay? And it's defined in the handbook and et cetera. A double major is either 60 credits from the same discipline, like doing two biology majors, so to, so to speak, or two chemistry or two computer science, or it could be 30 from biology and 30 from chemistry, or 30 from biochemistry and 30 from maths. You decided to do biochemistry and maths. Yes, people have done it before. And you decide to mix it that way, or as you'll soon see, you can get the other 30 credits from another faculty in predefined programs, which I will list shortly. Okay? That's what we call the double major, because it's twice the size. So you do have double majors in biology. Um, there's this one, uh, and other disciplines, uh, computer science, and so on. <clears throat> a minor now is half a major. You must have a major, as I said before, and you can attach a minor to it. So you might decide, I want to do a major in biology and a minor in physics, which is 15 credits. So you will get 30 and 15, 45, and then you find the other 15 from somewhere else. Okay? Uh, you cannot do a double major and a minor. So if you're doing a double major, you can't do a minor. You're not supposed to exceed the 60 credits required, unless you can exceed it in certain circumstances, but not deliberately by trying to sign up for two majors. We did have a student years ago who, who completed three majors and a minor in, in the same time of three years. But the university ruled that that will not be allowed again. Yeah? So he was specially compensated, in, in so to speak. Or, so understand that. So if you go in the system, you are, have two majors already and try to register for a minor, it's going to complain and tell you you can't do it. So you can do a, a single major and a minor. I'll show you some in a, in a, in a minute. You also have cross-faculty programs with social sciences and humanities. You, these are what are allowed at the moment. <clears throat> um, things may um, become more flexible over time. But for now, you can have computer science or IT with a major or minor in management, accounting, economics. If you're not in the management or accounting program, you're not going to be allowed to do any of those courses simply because there are hundreds and hundreds, those two programs are huge, the biggest programs on campus. So they can't just allow uh, everybody to come in and out as they see fit because the numbers are so large, right? That's the reason for the restrictions for that. Economics is fairly flexible. You could do some economics courses without being in economics because uh, their, their numbers are much smaller and more manageable, okay? But if you want to do anything in the social sciences, uh, you must have, Cape Maths or preliminary maths, because the reason for that is that in the accounting, et cetera, there are courses that require you to have done level one maths. And to do the level one maths in our faculty, you must have passed the prelim maths, the pure maths, Cape maths, or our prelim maths, okay? 
That's the reason for that restriction there. Um, so if you decide to do a science and a major in management and accounting, just, just know that you might have to do a few more level one courses than your, your other colleagues. It might exceed 24 credits because you have to do the management level one courses. It will probably it may go up to 30 credits in some cases. But it depends. In humanities, you could do the minors in Chinese, education, English, and a major or minor in, in psychology. Okay. So those, those are fairly popular. The education one is popular. The, ch the one in Chinese is only now starting. The minor, this semester. So your friends will not have told you about it because it didn't exist last semester. And as, right, so as I've said before, you must complete the three foundation courses. The English, the name of the English foundation courses have changed from what it was prior, but the code has remained the same. So if your friend comes and tell you, no, 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 you're not supposed to do that, just tell them that I have said, and the dean has said, and, your, and the university has said, we have changed the names to better reflect the, the new content. So even though your friends might have done found 1001 with a different name, uh, it's, it's just because of the change. But it's the same thing, it's an English foundation course. Now you cannot, you must do the English foundation course, but in the case of the latter two, the Caribbean civilization, which is history, and the other one is social science slash law, you can replace one of those, found, one, just one, one of those two foundation courses with a, any language course in humanities you, sh you so choose to do, or desire to do. But of course, you, if you go into the, there, if you, well, let's put it this way. If you want to do a, a language course in humanities, if you've never done Spanish, they're gonna make you do their preliminary Spanish course, which is, you can use to substitute. If you've done CSC Spanish, they might, do, may, may tell you do the beginner Spanish course. So it depends on what you're coming in. But whichever course you choose, you just need to notify the faculty office that you're doing it and you want to substitute one of the two, 1101 or 1301. And I have 1310 for some reason. But nevertheless, um, one of the two, I need to correct that. That should be 1301. So you understand what I'm saying? <clears throat> so you cannot substitute the English course with any other course. You must do it. But you can substitute one of the two. So you must leave here with at least two foundation courses and a language course if you so desire, or all three. And you just notify me of which one you want. Uh, I'm going to put online shortly a mechanism for you to submit that change online, but for now, just email us or fill out the form when we put it on the website. Okay. But it's important so that at the end I would know that why you haven't done three foundation courses because you decided to do the, the language course. We work on something called a grade point average, and that is which determines your class of degree, whether it's first class, upper, second, lower, or sorry, upper, second, or pass. Avoid the pass degree, please. <clears throat> You're not aiming to pass, you're aiming to excel. Okay, good. I say that once and once only. Base, but the class of degree is based on all your level two and three courses. We don't use the level one courses because we believe as a faculty that you need time to adjust. Okay, and you may have a rough time at level one. It is not impossible to do badly at level one and graduate with first class honors. <clears throat> you just adjust, and then as you go through level two and three, you just get A's, okay? And we have had students get A's in maths, and some have gotten 100%. Just to point that out, in case you didn't believe it's possible. Uh, for those with learning disabilities, you may find the adjustment a little harder, but do not give up. I say that to say that all the students with learning disabilities in our faculty have adjusted and have gone on to do well, okay? So, it applies to all students, but I just point that out because sometimes they think that it's, it is them. It has nothing to do with the disability. It's all to do with adjusting to a new way of, of learning. If you want a degree in this university, you must get a GPA of 2.0 or above. Okay? Not 1.99. Don't say to me, I got 1.99. Can you add on the 0 0.01? It doesn't work like that. Okay, we don't round up. We don't do anything like that. If it's 1.99, it is 1.99, and you're going to have to go and pass a course and get it up to two. It's as simple as that, okay? We're not rounding numbers. We're not, uh, none of that is going to take place. So try and avoid. So your objective is to maintain a, a GPA of 2.5 and above, minimum. You're not aiming to have past degrees, okay? 
Just to note that here are the sort of uh, grades you can get. For a GPA to work, you need to get something called quality points, which I'll explain in a minute. But every time you get a grade, you get some points. The highest is the A plus, 4.3, and the lowest is C at 2. That's where the 2 comes in. Now you know it's strange to have three Fs, F1, F2, and F3. Let's be clear, an F is an F. If you fail, you fail. It doesn't matter if it's F1, F2, or F3. It's still a fail, and you still have to repeat. All the university is saying to you is that um, the pass mark is 50%. So what they're saying is that, OK, if you didn't pass and you got 50%, below 50, we're going to chop up that below 50 part into three layers so that at least you don't get zero GPA. OK? So F3 is a devastating grade to get. It's, it's around 20, 20, 70% or low. That massacres your GPA in ways you cannot imagine, right? You can, you have cases, you can end up with four Cs, like three Cs, a B, and an F3, and get below two, okay? You don't want anything like an F3. You certainly don't want F2. F1, we will forgive for now, but we expect you to pass, right? But F1 and F2, on a more serious note, is to, lessen the blow of failing a course, okay? So try and avoid those, those failures. They don't help your average whatsoever. So to show you how it works, here is an example of three courses. And there's the marks next to it, 86%, 50, and 10%. And you see the equivalent grades. So when it's 86%, it's an A, and when it's at 10%, it's an F3. Okay, next to it is the quality points. So when you get an A, you get four quality points a C, two quality points, and an F3, a good fat zero. And as you know with zero, zero times anything is zero. So what you typically do is you multiply the quality points by the number of credits. So three times four is 12, and so on, six, and three times zero is zero. You see why F3 is so bad? Because <clears throat> no matter how many different ways you multiply it, you end up with zero. And when you divide it out, you take the total number of quality points and divide by the total number of credits, which is nine, and you end up with two. So look what happened here. You got an A. You didn't do too badly with the C, but this F3 dragged you all the way down to two, and two is the, is the minimum that you must get in any semester, et cetera. So you, the damage that F3 can do to your average is not to be underestimated, even with the A. So if it wasn't for the A, it would have been below two. Anything less than that A would have been below two. So to give you an example, this GPA here, and remember it's an average. So this GPA as it stands is 2.4 with the two A's and the, the, the four F's. <clears throat> you got a C. The problem with the C is that the C GPA, the quality points you're gonna get for that is, is, two, is gonna put you at two, okay? It's below the average. So unfortunately, even though you passed, your GPA still drops. Okay? Because it's an average. You do not want to play games with your average, and I can't emphasize this more. So the best way to avoid any problems with your average is to pass everything. Okay? Don't listen to people telling you, man, 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 don't worry about the foundation course. Because the foundation course, even though it doesn't apply to your degree GPA, it applies to your semester GPA, which we'll talk about in a minute. All right? So remember, a grade point average is an average. And like all averages, it moves up and down depending on where the grade falls. So just be aware of that. So the dreaded word required to withdraw. Required to withdraw is not, a, is not, some people think required to withdraw is an option, that when you hear it, you decide if you're going or not. It doesn't work like that. Required to withdraw means required to withdraw, and we may rescind it under certain, certain circumstances. But nevertheless, when you do, when you do your course, when, you, uh, when a semester is completed and you've completed your exams and whatnot, we will calculate the GPA for the semester. If it falls below two, you get a warning. If in the consecutive semester, the next one, same thing happens again, you fall below two, you're required to withdraw, okay? Some people are, get clever and decide, I will do badly in semester one, but pass in semester two, do badly in semester, and get alternate warnings, but avoid the RTW. While they, while they may seem clever, what tends to happen is your degree GPA starts to slide downwards. So all you're doing is prolonging your pain. <clears throat> and when they do finish, they realize that their degree GPA, so they were never required to withdraw. They just have a lot of warnings, but then their degree GPA ends up being below two and they can't graduate. <clears throat> 
So the best thing to do is never get a warning. <clears throat> but nevertheless, if you get a warning, it does not mean panic, run out of here screaming and, and, and screaming murder or anything like that. What it means is you need to go to your academic advisor, which we'll see down later what that means, <clears throat> to find out what you need to do to recover. A warning is just that, a warning that you need to slow down and take heed of, where, of your studies, okay? <clears throat> Required to withdraw, the dean can recommend, because I can only recommend, the principal approves, that a student's required to withdraw is rescinded. But if you come to me and say to me, you know, dean, I didn't do well because I was watching reruns of Bionic Man. <clears throat> you know, I couldn't get out of bed. People tell me these things. You know, I certainly don't want to hear I had a quarrel with the boyfriend or any girlfriend or anything like that. That doesn't impress me, right? Um, but if you come and tell me serious family issues, financial issues, something that really would derail you, we can help you out. But really and truly, you should not wait till you get a required to withdraw. If you are having issues like that, then there are mechanisms to report it. Usually starting with your academic advisor, or if you're not comfortable, the head, or if not, myself, or the Office of Student Services. But there are ways to get around. Do not sit there and suffer silently. <coughs> At the end, <coughs> At the end of the, I'm almost finished. At the end of the semester, you're asked to evaluate each course and the performance of, so to speak, of the lecturers. We really need you to fill those out. They're online. <clears throat> you have time. They don't take long. They're very short. They're important. Don't only fill them out because you don't like the lecturer. Okay? I don't like him. I don't like her. She give me a, she give me a film. I can put bare, bare nose on. No. Okay? But if the lecturer did well you need to congratulate them because it applies to their future. And it also allows them to know if they're doing well. So if I get nothing as a lecturer, I can't make a determination. I can't say to my boss, you know, I didn't get any complaints, so that, that means I was a good, good lecturer. It doesn't work like that, okay? But it's also meant to be informative because sometimes a lecturer may not realize that he or she is speaking quickly. He or she is saying something that's offensive. Things like that, so you need to inform. It's anonymous, they don't know. So when you log in, you need to log in with your ID number so that the system knows that you're a student here. But then once you log in with the ID number, it takes you to a different system altogether to fill out the form, okay? So the system will say, yes, this is so-and-so in this discipline, so I'm gonna send them over to fill out these forms for these different courses. That's all that's required. It does not log your information in terms of identifying information. So I assure you of that. And as the person who sees all of the reports, the only time you can be identified is if you go into the survey and you write in the survey, my name is Joe Brown and I'm telling you I don't like you, right? <laughs> then we know who you are, right? Do not, under any circumstances, identify yourself. Do not say, you know, I'm the short man that you insulted. You know, if somebody insulted you because you're short, don't go and write the insult. Just say you insulted me because you know what's going to happen. Oh, I know who this is, that short person, right? So just be smart. But we take all information seriously, okay? We do not play games with it. The faculty handbook is supposed to be online in these two areas. You, you can take a picture of it if you so wish. It may not be there yet, but what we, because of certain technical issues, but we are going to put up a draft, draft copy on our own website. It's draft not because of the courses, it is draft because of the part that talks about officers of the university. That part is missing but the actual courses are correct. So you see a big fat word draft, doesn't mean the courses are incorrect. And then at some point down the road when the technical issues are resolved, next, this coming semester you'll get the full thing. But the regulations are in there, et cetera. Uh, have a look at the regulations at some point. On our website we're gonna give you some summaries of the more important points. But uh, just have a look. I know it's, it, it reads, like a real legal document, which it is, and it's as boring as ever, but you should still read it because it pertains to you, okay? You don't have to memorize it. We're not going to test you on it, just in case. <clears throat> You're, you'll be assigned an academic advisor during the semester, by before the middle of the semester. Um, it takes long because we don't get the full list of students too quickly. But nevertheless, um, you can go to the deputy deans or any lecturer in the interim or even afterwards. But you should try and see your, your advisor at least once per year, usually before registration. I would prefer you to see them at least once a semester. But 
you know, at least let he or she know that you're doing okay. But if you run into problems, make sure and speak to them as quickly as possible. Don't wait. And your Mike Cavehill email address is the way you communicate with the academic staff or the administrative staff. Okay? Because you have to understand that if there's nothing to stop someone from creating a Gmail account, put your name to it and send it with some good um, profanity in it and make it seem like it's you, right? The only way we can detect it is you is through your Mike Cave Hill. Now, if you're crazy enough to go and get someone your password to your Mike Cave Hill and they decide to do something strange with it, that's up to you. Okay, that password is to remain with you and you only. Similarly, I'm sure you don't give their PIN number to your bank account. But the look on the faces makes me wonder. Is there anybody, right? You don't give that PIN number to a soul, okay? So the same way you treat your money, treat your Mike Cave Hill email address in the same way. Your safety is our number one priori priority. If you have any issues, these are the people you contact. Uh, campus security is the first, but it depends on where and what happens, okay? This includes bullying. So if someone is bullying you physically and on cyber online, if you're being harassed online, you come and tell us immediately and we will deal with it in the most efficient and severe manner possible because we don't tolerate any sort of harassment of any sort at all. No teasing, no nothing like that, okay? We do take the matters very seriously. I, I'm emphasizing because students, or let's put it this way, that thing at secondary and primary school where you grew up saying you don't squeal, that's nonsense, right? For your own safety and for your peace of mind, if you run into a problem here, you're a big adult, you talk to us. I assure you, if you complain to me, I'm not going to go to the person you complain about and say, look, you see her? She complained about you yesterday, right? We don't operate like that. I would just talk to the person and say, I'm receiving complaints, and this is what we're going to do in your case, okay? You, you remain anonymous. <clears throat> we have faculty lockers outside of the physics, on the corridor in the physics building, which you will see on the tour. Okay, I'll soon finish. <clears throat> The lockers are rented at $30 Barbados for the entire academic year. You'll get a refund of $10 at the end with the return of the key. If you don't return the key, we have to use the money to go and get a new key. <clears throat> um, but there's a limited number of lockers for $20, but you will provide your own lock, etc. cetera, okay? You get that from the faculty office. You, you, you go in and fill out the form and pay the money there. Okay. But today, the most important thing is to go and register. So tomorrow onwards, you can go and deal with the lockers. <clears throat> Safety seminars, which I started at the start. All persons doing any course in biology, chemistry, microbiology, ecology, environmental science, or anything to do with biological and chemical sciences, back in this room at 1 o'clock, <clears throat> we'll finish registering you by then. And for the others, it is 2 o'clock. If you straddle both, you have two hours. So be prepared to get comfortable, right? <clears throat> um, it's compulsory and mandatory you attend. Attendance will be noted because you are not stepping in our labs without having a safety seminar, okay? And I'm gonna not miss the beat to do what I say every year. When I was in sc school, in a lab, a person did not follow procedures, I managed to burn my hand very badly with a Bunsen burner, okay? And just to emphasize the point, to make sure you understand what, what it's like, I had to go through every day with someone taking a needle, prizing up the dead skin, and spraying the, the underlying burn to heal so that I did not get scars. I had to suffer that for months. All because this person didn't understand you don't push a Bunsen burner behind someone who's going to turn. Okay? So you must follow the rules. Okay? So I have no scars, luckily, but I could have been in a different situation. All the hair was gone. So. Do not fool around, do not fool around in the labs. Listen to the academic staff and the lab technicians, etc. So after the seminar, each seminar, there's a tour of the faculty where you show you where the labs are, etc. If you need to attend both sem uh, safety seminars, just go to the tour at three o'clock because each safety seminar is an hour long. But if you, after the BCS one, you can go to the one at two o'clock if you don't have to go to any more seminars after that. And we went through this before. The Sagicor building is at the top of the hill, to the left. You will get a registration form. You will sit. 
You'll be led to the particular room for your discipline, and when you get your turn, you, the academic staff member will tell you what you need to do. Once done, you will go upstairs, the middle floor, well, those doing biology and chemistry courses will go from the ground to the middle, and those in the other department will go from the top downwards. And then you will get assistance in ML6. If you have your own handheld device, phone, tablet, you can pick up the UE wire, wireless for free and register there and then as opposed to fighting out with the machines. But either way, you will get the help. This is why we sent that notice out. Did you receive our emails before you came? So it went into the ether then, okay. So we sent you emails explaining some of this. I will find out why it didn't work. But nevertheless, everything that was, that was in there, I just repeated again. So you don't have to worry. And then in the middle floor, you have the different societies there, but members of the group. So you will see lots of students standing around here with yellow shirts like this and FST and chemistry society. So they will guide you up to the top and they will help you, okay? Some other points to note, the system that you're registering on is CHOL, KFIL Online. Some people say call, chal, whatever you want to call it. But when you register, just note that lectures are defined by L's, L01, usually just L01. Um, tutorials and labs. Courses have lectures, and depending on the discipline have, well, most just have the tutorial or the lab, but some have both. So you will be, that will be explained to you either by the academic advisor and or the students who are helping you in the lab. But you, you're, it's not a case where uh, we have, I don't know of any courses where you're just registering for lectures unless it's a project course, okay? So just be aware. So you will get guidance on that and you need to pick one or the other and submit and all should be well. Overrides, there's something called overrides. The word implies that if you don't like something, you can get it overridden. That's not what it means. Override is an internal definition. What it means is that if you run into a problem that cannot be resolved today, some sort of technical problem, a prerequisite is missing because they didn't put in your CSC grades for some reason, then you enter the override and as a faculty, we will process it for you. And then here's the important thing. Once it's processed, you will receive an email at your MyKFL account telling you to go and register for the course. We can't register you and all we can do is remove the block, okay? So if you don't, want, if you don't read your MyKFIL, my you're not going to receive the response that the override has been approved or disapproved, okay? So remember that, so you really need to do that. My last thing here is these things I want you to rem remember. Yeah, everybody laughs when they say that. I am quite serious about this, okay? You're here to study, okay? You're not here to get into all sorts of problems uh, and behavior. So, yes, you're at the, the, the Gilfet, some man or woman smiling at you sweetly and come across, tell you the best looking thing since sliced bread. <laughs> all sorts of, your, your beautiful eyes, I really love you, and then start pushing one drink after the next, after the, no, you, you don't get into that, all right? You, you have your fun, tell them thank you, I know I'm good looking, you don't need to remind me, and you move on, okay? You're seriously here to study. Do not get caught up in anything nefarious or, or disadvantaged to you, okay? <clears throat> and here is my end, my science jokes for the day. <clears throat> right? I, I am finished, so we will guide you up the hill. Any person with a physical disability, please, or temporary or permanent, please stay here. I need to speak to you first but all others can go up the hill as it stands. There's no need to rush, we will get to you quickly. Thank you very much. <laughs>